And it's a strong signal. That's great. Looks like we're going to have another great broadcast today. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. It's time this Wednesday for more Baldur's Gate 3. Are we close to finishing Act 2? I feel like we spent a really long time on Act 1. Uh, and we've been blowing through Act 2. And yet, Act 2 probably took as long as, you know, playing any other video game. <laughs> This, uh, this game, it takes a long time. It's, it's a, there's a lot of time involved in this game. But we're live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Kick. Good to see Oh Boy One Fighter. Obi One Fighter, I see. Okay, Obi One Fighter on Twitch today. All of the regulars, the members, and the Patreon supporters on YouTube today. Best Cruder, Slatty Bart Fast, Cat5. The Magic Q, Arcade Tony J, John DeGiambrodino, Jersey Julian Z. It's Rusty in the chat today, uh, who just became a silver ox. Thank you very much, Rusty. Toby Noble is on Facebook. Good to see you, my friend. Piper Girl and Aaron Tillolibzi on Twitch. Hello from Hungary, says Aaron. Well, hello. All the way from Seattle. We are in very different places on this planet. But, as of right now, we are both together. Enjoying the broadcast. It's going to be a wild week of content this week, everybody. Um, I, I, sh I shouldn't even... I shouldn't even talk, really. That's the problem with having live streams, is you... You have to you find something to talk about, and you end up talking about things you shouldn't. But let's just say that we've got a wild week of content. Not just me, but there will be lots of your favorite content creators this week, all producing some interesting and amazing content that I hope you'll all enjoy, that I hope you'll all look forward to. I am also one of those. I have been uh, uh, burning the midnight oil working on content for this week. And uh, yeah, but it's good to take a break from that and play some games with all of you. John Washburn says, big coffee time, Ox. Thank you very much, John Washburn. Big coffee time to you as well. I actually already finished my coffee. I'm now on the Coke. The Koken Cigar. Obi-Wan Fighter says, I've been binge-watching your Fallout videos. Thank you, Obi-Wan Fighter. Many more to come. Uh, that was on Twitch. Jack Mayhem on Twitch says, Good morning and afternoon to all. Hope you all had a wonderful day today. And Ox, I hope you have a great stream. Sadly, I can't join in right now, but I'll gladly watch your stream later tonight. No worries, Jack May. You probably have work or school or some activity, and you know what? Responsibilities first. Take care of you and yours, and my broadcast will be here waiting for you. Mr. Dragon says, Hey, Ox, on Twitch, what are your feelings on what you've seen of the new Fallout show so far? Um, well, uh, you really should go to my YouTube channel, where I have published uh, three separate videos about the, the Fallout show. A couple of months ago, I published a video when the first teaser screenshots released. Uh, then a couple of... Uh oh, I, no, I've only published two of them. Whoops. And then uh, uh, last week... last Was it last weekend? No, it was a couple of weeks ago. I published a video responding to the first trailer that dropped a couple of weeks ago. So you should really check that out. I go into um, all my thoughts. I might have more thoughts ready for you this week. So subscribe on YouTube and continue to follow me wherever you like to follow me. And don't worry, you will get some of those thoughts. Arcade says uh, the Fallout TV show looks good, but the cars are wrong. 
yeah, that's essentially my take. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit more in-depth than that. I get into some of the concerning bits of the lore, uh, like what, uh, like the NCR lore. I touched on that a little bit in my last video. Um, but overall, there's I haven't seen any big, major problems with the world building yet. I mean, all we have had so far is the trailer. So you've seen what I've seen, and I had, didn't see anything in the trailer that really violated the fundamental structure of the Fallout universe. Uh, instead, everything that I saw looked like it was on tone and uh, would fit right into the Fallout universe. So I'm excited to see what the show actually has in store for all of us. Julian Z says, Hi Ox, so good to see you on this uh, content. Have anything to do... Oh, this I see. he's talking about the content I teased earlier. Does it have anything to do with the Fallout TV show? Just a day left. Just a day left. So excited. Can you tell us when this content will drop? What? No, the show drops on the 11th. April 11th. Today is the what? Third? Today's the third, so we can't watch the show until the 11th. All of the episodes are going to be available to watch on April 11th on Amazon Prime. Uh, but yes, I am publishing additional content about the show that is set to come out later this week. JT Tiaz Bob Muzzer. On Twitch. Says, Hello Ox, I played the Fallout New Vegas. Uh, AKA, your vids inspired me to play the Fallout series. Well, thank you very much, a Bob Muser. So glad you got into Fallout New Vegas. And I hope uh, you've been in you've enjoyed the other Fallouts as well. Glad you're continuing to watch my content. Aiden Khan on YouTube says, Hey, Oxhorn, haven't been on stream since the COVID days. Glad to see you're streaming still. Yep, I'm still here. I haven't gone anywhere. Don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. I've already been doing this for nearly two decades now. Well, I mean, not necessarily streaming. Well, actually, yeah, I started Scotch and Smoke Rings, what? It was in 2010? 2009, 2010, something like that. Uh, so, but yeah, I've been producing video content since 2004. So live streaming since 2010, YouTube content since 2004, and I'm still doing it to this day, so I don't have any plans to change that. Julian Z says, I meant just days left, sorry. Okay, all right. So it's not just a day left, it's days left. Right, that's what I thought. April 11th. That's the big number. Uh, Kunk says, Ox, there's a new featurette for the show that's just a couple of minutes long on Amazon Prime's YouTube channel that just dropped last night. Uh, what time last night? Because I did... I did... I, I've been working on the show. I mean, I haven't been working on the show. I have been working on my content responses to the show all week, and so I've been consuming a lot of uh, media about the show, and I think I'm fully caught up, but I was working all night last night, so, I mean, admittedly, if it was after eight or nine, <laughs> I didn't see it, so I'll, I'll check out their YouTube channel after the broadcast, but I, th I think I'm all caught up on uh, the show teasers and trailers that they've released so far. Mr. Dragon says, I hope it's going to be as good as The Last of Us adaptation. Also, I've started downloading Metro Exodus to play again. Cheers 100. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I Metro Exodus was a, was a heck of a lot of fun. And the TV adaptation for The Last of Us was exceptionally done. It was so well done. Um, you know, they're two very different beasts. Like the, the Last of Us adaptation is adapting an already beloved and established story. The Fallout show is adapting a universe, but it's creating its own unique story. So we 
we none of us are familiar with the story yet. We haven't um, uh, developed an emotional bond to the story yet by playing the characters in that story or by following the story for many years like The Last of Us had. So it's completely new except for the world building and the tone, which, of course, they have to they have to nail that. Right. It's not a fallout show if you don't nail the tone that makes it fallout. Like if you don't understand what fallout is about, then it's not going to be a, a fallout show. So they're going to have to, to to nail that. And as long as they tell a compelling story that's set within the already established histories of the Fallout universe, then I'm going to be satisfied. I, I, I just hope it's a good story, and I hope it doesn't violate any of the established histories of the Fallout universe. And if they can do those two things, I think they're going to win most of us over. Yeah, there will be the guys who get a little finicky about the visor on the T-60 helmet flipping up and down, and that's not in the games, and how, how can they add something like that to, to, the, sh to the show? It's not in the games, and, you know, you know I, I get it, I get it, because it's not perfect. It's not perfect. You're not perfectly adapting power armor. But it's a small little detail. I'm going to be getting into this in upcoming videos, but I'll, I'll give you, a, I'll, I'll talk about it now. <clears throat> when it comes to lore, when it comes to world building, when it comes to adapting one uh, universe from one media into another, there, there are two major things that you have to pay attention to when it comes to lore. The first are the pillars that prop up the structure of that world. These are going to be things like dates and histories and the roles and characteristics of established factions and the style and architecture of that universe. Like, cyberpunk has to be the cyberpunk style. If it's retrofuturistic, it's no longer cyberpunk. That, right, like, that completely breaks the world. Fallout has to be atom punk. If it's no longer atom punk, if instead it's glitzy sci-fi, like Mass Effect, then it's no longer Fallout. It's lost the underlying structure that creates that universe. So there are certain pil pillars holding up the structure that you have to get right. But then there are facets of the universe. They're little, you know, blips and blobs that give the universe gleam and glitter and luster and character. They're interesting. They make the world better. If you get a few of them wrong, yeah, the gem might lose its luster a little bit, but it doesn't destroy it. It doesn't fundamentally alter it. It doesn't change a diamond and turn it into a chunk of coal, right? It's, it just loses its luster a little bit. You can get some of the facets of that universe wrong, like a helmet that flips up, or, a, I don't know, the wrong, uh, the wrong color of a super mutant, or something like that, and you still haven't violated the underlying structure of the universe. So that's kind of where my mind is at when I'm anticipating the Fallout show. I I'm going to try to be forgiving and lenient if the showrunners violate any of the facets. Change them a little bit, alter them a little bit, especially if it's necessary to make the adaptation. Like the visor on the helmet, it's kind of necessary. If you've got a primary character who's in a suit of power armor for the entire time, that actor still has to act, and his face is part of his tool set. It's harder to act without being able to show your face, you know, on screen, right? It's not like it's radio. So, yeah, I, I get it. They had to have the flip-up visor so that Aaron Moten could act as Maximus. Things like that, I'm going to be lenient, I'm going to forgive them, but if they destroy any of the structural supports that are holding up the Fallout universe, like if they changed the date for when the bombs dropped, right? Or if they made it so that they're at war with Korea instead of China, or if they do something deliberately wrong like that, that's when I'm going to have a really big problem. That's when it becomes unforgivable, and that's when suddenly show the show is no longer interesting to me. And I haven't seen anything like that from the trailer, right? Which is what I talked about in my last video, kind of dissecting that trailer they released a couple of weeks ago. 
Yeah, they've made a few changes to the facets. They haven't violated the structure, and that was my primary concern. Nick Valentine says, you mean the Pillars of Transcendence? Let's not talk about the Pillars of Transcendence. I'd rather not go back there. We'll leave that in Fallout 76. A long, long, long ways away in Fallout 76. Arcade says, or if they kill dog meat, we will riot in the streets. Well, Arcade, I hate to break it to you, but canonically, dog meat is already dead. And I'm not even making that up. Canonically, the original dog meat from Fallout 1 died at the Mariposa military base. <laughs> the the, the develop, uh, interplay, back when they owned the rights to Fallout while they were advertising Fallout 2, in the, game, in the game guide for Fallout 2, they came up with a synopsis of the first game and a canonical ending. And this is why you never do this, this sort of thing. It's why Bethesda has avoided making canonical endings to their previous games whenever possible. Like, they had to make a canonical ending to Fallout 3 that the Brotherhood was successful against the Enclave because they wanted the Brotherhood to still be there for the events of Fallout 4 so they could bring Arthur Maxon and his Brotherhood from the Capital Wasteland to Boston. So yeah, they made that a canonical ending. But for many of the other side quests and characters, they've left it open on purpose because they wanted to avoid what Interplay did when they made Fallout 2. Because in the guide for Fallout 2, the developers can canonically identified the Vault Dweller as a man. So sorry if you played a female Vault Dweller. Tough luck, that's no longer canonical. That might just be your game fantasy. Canonically, the Vault Dweller was a man. And canonically, Dogmeat died at the Mar Mariposa military base. <laughs> Specifically, he got killed by the laser security. They went that deep, like he got killed by the laser security. It was meant to be a joke because uh, the, <clears throat> the mili Mariposa military base in Fallout 1 was notorious for having really awful security and the AI for the companions was stupid. Like you would, you would, you had to time it right to get past a bunch of laser trip wires essentially, but your companions are constantly following you. Like you would move and they would move and you would move and they would move and you can't control them. So you would wait for the laser to disappear. You'd go across the laser. Then your companion would start moving. The laser would turn on and obliterate. And the lasers were like a one hit kill. So invariably, your companions all died, in particular Dogmeat. So it was kind of a joke because they knew that that was a problem in Fallout 1 because the fans were complaining about it and they rolled with it in the strategy guide for Fallout 2. They're like, oh yeah, and Dogmeat canonically died in the Mariposa military base. But it's a problem because now Dogmeat lovers everywhere are like, oh, well, okay. I should really do a lore video on Dogmeat. I still haven't done that. Rachel says, will you stream day of after you get your initial thoughts written down? I will be so sad if we don't even get any tiny ox rants. I mean, I've, I feel like I've answered this question over and over and over again. And, and the answer still is no, but maybe. No, but maybe. Eh. And I know that's probably not the answer you guys want, but that's my answer for now. It's no, because I'll be busy. But maybe... We'll see. Adam says, but then he came back in the Cafe of Broken Dreams in two. Kind of, yeah, but the Cafe of Broken Dreams it itself breaks the fourth wall. <laughs> the Fallout 2 was weird. It, it was just weird. It was great, don't get me wrong, but it was weird. Even Tim Kaine, one of the uh, directors of the original Fallout, had come out later and said that Fallout 2 went too far with some of their humor. They didn't, they didn't take the, 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 the world building as seriously, the lore of the Fallout universe as seriously as he would have liked, which is why you had talking mole rats named The Brain and uh, intelligent talking Deathclaws who wore robes and talked. Even the lizards can't talk because they don't have vocal cords. And Anyway, um, but, but the Cafe of Broken Dreams is a random encounter where not only do you find dog meat from Fallout 1, and incidentally, that's the only way you can get dog meat as a companion in Fallout 2, is if you stumble upon that random encounter and recruit him in a dream fourth wall breaking flashback to a casting room for characters in Fallout 1. 
That was the plot of the Cafe of Broken Dreams. You're walking around finding NPCs who appeared in Fallout 1, talking about how they were applying for the roles of Fallout 1 and how they were casted. Some of the female characters even said that they had to sleep with the director in order to get their role. I mean, it's dated. It's kind of creepy and dated by today's standards. And yeah, so nothing that happens in the Cafe of uh, Broken Dreams can be considered canonical because they break the fourth wall. It's just a wild wasteland thing, I guess. It was weird. Definitely creative, but weird. Uh, Jessica McDonald on Facebook says, It'll be a Thursday, Ox, a.k.a. Scotch and Smoke Rings. You kind of have to talk about the show that night. <laughs> you, you guys are, are pushing me into a corner here. Is it going to be Thursday? Crap, I didn't even think about looking at my calendar. I take life day at a time. Ladies and gents, I, I don't look forward. I, I, I probably should. 5, 7, 9, 10, 11. Thursday. Oh, my God. Oh, that's going to interfere with my show. The 11th is a Thursday. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll just... I'll you know, oh, fly by the seat of my pants, I guess. I'll figure it out on the day when I get there. We'll see. Sinful on Twitch says double booked. Yeah. That's what it is. I'm double booked. Robert Rhodes says, I mean, Fallout 1 had a crazy random encounter where you encounter the TARDIS. I have a wacky theory, no way it's real, that the mysterious stranger is just Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, that's great. If only he had a sonic screwdriver, right? Yeah, that was another thing they did that is regrettable. Uh, of course, they had no idea what the Fallout franchise would become when they did that. And uh, they, did, they had no idea people would be taking the lore seriously. And... The random encounters, I guess, were just initially intended to be zany and ridiculous. But it does mean that canonically in the Fallout universe, Doctor Who exists. Because he shows up in a TARDIS in Fallout 1. And there's a giant lizard somewhere in the universe. <laughs> because there's a giant lizard print. And the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is also part of the same universe. Because we found a giant sperm whale on the ground it fell from the skies there's a lot of weird stuff that you kind of just have to ignore the random encounters in that game it does they don't really work into the continuity of the world alt Gwendol says we're getting sun glare from your window oh are you all right i'll take care of that Kerrigan says, really enjoy watching you play. Can't believe I've been a member for 15 months. Time does fly. But been watching you for nearly 10 years now. Thank you, Kerrigan. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Time does indeed fly. Can't believe I've been doing this as long as I have been. I'm so grateful you're here. Pinsley on Twitch says, the way I see it is that there's the real Fallout world lore and then fourth wall breaks and references that exist alongside the real lore but do not coincide with it. Uh, I, I see what you're saying. Um, and that's kind of the viewpoint that you have to take for certain gameplay mechanics as well. And I should really do a video about this because it's been something that I've been thinking about. But there are certain things that you have to do while playing the game that are cumbersome and don't really make sense from a narrative perspective of the game. So sometimes you have to separate between lore and game mechanics, right? Okay, well, is it the lore of the universe that sometimes gravity just disappears on the planet because when you kill a character, the ragdoll flies into the sky? And that's unrealistic. That's lore-breaking. Well, no, we can't assume that because it's a game mechanic. It's a, it's a weird quirk of the engine. Things like that. 
So we're already doing that in order to play the game. We're separating the universe from gameplay mechanics, and maybe we should do the same with random encounters as well. Greg Hinjos on YouTube says, 20 months. I just turned 30 on Monday. I hear these are the golden years, so I'll keep my fingers crossed. I mean, 30. I mean, 30 is a good, it's a good decade. Your 30s are a good decade. You know, enjoy your 30s, live them up. But the 40s are okay so far, I assume. I mean, I'm not breaking down just yet. Everyone says that when you get into your 40s, your body starts to deteriorate. I haven't noticed anything like that. Like, I still have both my knees. They're not titanium. Haven't had any crazy surgeries just yet. My back is fine. I'm not falling apart. Maybe I'm just lucky. Kunk says the 40s is not so great. Really? Because I'm early. I'm only 42 or 43. How old am I? I think I'm 42. Or 43. I'm at the beginning of my 40s, and so far they're okay. Really, I'm just getting gray. I'm getting a lot of gray. Like, if you look under my chin, it doesn't show up on camera, but I'm getting a lot of gray beard hair. It's like every month I just become whiter and whiter and whiter. I'm getting... Aside from that, I feel fine. Like, I don't feel any different, and I don't have any aches and pains just yet. So I'm hoping my 40s will be golden. Judd Knight says the 50s suck. Oh, man. I've got to say that, and i got to look forward to that in less than 10 years. Going to hit my 50s in less than 10 years. you got to tell me how much it sucks. Oh, man. Steve Whit at Whittleful says deteriorate in your 40s. Just wait until your 50s. See, this is why I was trying to work out. Like last year, I was trying to uh, get in shape. And build muscle before my, my muscle mass started to deteriorate. And once you pass your 40s, like every year you lose 2% of your muscle mass or something like that. Unless you lock it in. I, I, read, I read up on it. I don't know if this is true. But I read that, if, that when you hit your 40s, if you, start, if you lock in your muscle mass, you build up a lot of muscle, you can maintain it. But once you start losing it, you can't really ever get it back. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm no biologist, so don't, don't quote me, but... That's why I was trying to do all of the working out because I wanted to like, I, I, feel, I felt like I had this opportunity. I've got one year to build up all my muscle mass before I hit my 40s and then I start losing it all. But then I kind of fell off the wagon there. And, yeah. Finsley on Twitch says, I'd like to see a lore reason for bobbleheads inexplicably influencing my intelligence or charisma, etc. Yeah, see, this is this goes back to what I was saying earlier about having to separate game mechanics from the lore of the universe. Is it canonical that bobbleheads exist in the Fallout universe? Yeah, sure, why not? Is it canonical that they give you magic powers? No. No, that's a game mechanic. And it's the same with mag perk magazines and snow globes or any other little game thing, game collectible, that you find in the universe. So we've already have to, we have to do that mental calculus. We have to suspend our disbelief while playing the game already. So maybe we should do the same for random encounters. Cillian Murphy uh, says, Oxhorn, show an old picture of you with no beard. Uh, so that's the thing. Uh, there isn't one. I, I graduated high school in the year 2000. And I wasn't allowed to have a beard in high school. So as soon as I graduated, I stopped shaving. And it's been that way ever since. I really don't know what my chin looks like anymore. It's been, well, it's been a long time. Is it still there? I'm not sure, really. I think there was once or twice where I had to shave my beard or at least trim it down really short. But I don't recall ever taking any pictures of it, so I don't know if I can, if I have anything that I can share. Jessica on Facebook says, uh, "Hey, I've been old since day one. I'm the one person I knew growing up with a heart defect under the age of 60." Oh God, Jessica, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, uh, you've definitely got experience in that arena. 
Thankfully, I've been okay with my heart. I get my heart checked um, every year at least, you know, because they say that um, obese people like myself are more prone to having heart issues, but uh, I'm, I'm lucky. No one really in my family has any heart issues, so I should probably stop abusing it and, and you know, get rid of the weight or something, but so far, so good. Okay, I should probably get into the game. There, is that better? No more glare? Ah, yes, that's right, I forgot. But I remember now. We were going through these trials for um, Shadowheart here. Okay, let's see. Which way? We did the soft step trial. We did the faith leap trial. <laughs> we did the self same trial. I think I stopped in front of the next trial. Is this the next trial? Oh, hello, what is that? Whoa, what's down there? Gotta check it out. That is a very large vase. Don't go down yet, Ox, unless you want to mess with the devil quest. Oh, really? I mean, is there a reason not to? Okay, maybe I should do the Shara thing first. All right, let me finish the trials of Shara. Let's remember that this is here. And then we'll do that later. Oh, this is the one where we had to kill a bunch of guys. Justicar Nightweaver. Wait, I'm silenced in that room? So melee damage only. Oh no. Portal first ox says cat five, yeah. Okay. Seek and you shall find me. Of course.
All's well that ends. Not as bad as it could have. This is an awkward angle. Time to press ahead. All right, I'm going to take a look at their um, vision for a bit. So far, I haven't seen anything pop up over here, so this might be a safe spot. Going to keep watching for a bit. All right, so the red goes up there. Oh, it briefly skirts that. Briefly. When he turns around, if I have the characters hugging this wall over here, yeah, but then I'm not going to be able to make any attacks over there. Stop the portal to end the silence. Oh, the portal ends the silence. All right. Well, then I guess I, guess I should get Gale in here. Your desire. Step by step. next. I'm guessing Barty Horn. Taking my time in the shadows. is interrupted. What do you mean path is interrupted? Am I going to have to go all the way up there? All right, I'm going to wait till he turns around. And okay. These boots have seen everything. If I really must. I'd love to, thanks. Light as air. Need to press onward. Got it! <laughs> oh, check out those resistance. Weak against Radiance. That's the only thing it's weak against. 
It's less resistant to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. It's more resistant to all magic to fire, cold, and acid, and it's invulnerable to other magic types. Right, so we're just gonna do piercing. Another fight. Let's go. There we go! Resi uh, resistance to necrotic, weak to radiance. Does she have disadvantage on that? Hey, I'll take it. Oh, do we have do we have traps down here? Oh no. Crap, I didn't long rest. She doesn't have any of her good stuff. Oh, man. that do nothing? Weak to radiance and that did nothing. He just got Gale really good.
Undead. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, that's a big one. One down. Seventy five percent Divine Strike Radiant. Wow, that sucked. That sucked. Wait, that'll cancel that, which I don't want to do. So let's just do damage.
Can I get three? Uh, it'll be tricky. No. <laughs> My turn. Missed and saved. Wow. Place. Well, everyone in the universe has decided to text me all at the same time. Give me just a second here. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that puts me in the ice a little bit. I risk it, yeah, I risk it. Come on, Karlak. Show me. Nice. You can act fast. Down with you. In How'd they break free of that? He's still concentrating that. Well, I wish I could line them up better, but actually they're almost done. Okay, there we go. Bingo. At least things have stayed interesting. Tome of the Faith Leap 
trial. Your tongue may claim to have complete faith in Lady Shar, but does your heart follow suit? Dare you trust your instincts and navigate her sacred darkness with only your faith to protect you? For those who believe, the darkness is a holy path that leads to the Night Singer's embrace. For those of weak faith, it shall become hungry, pitiless maw, intent on swallowing you whole. Tread only where Lady Shar bids you to, and you shall have nothing to fear. Button. Do I push the button? This will be fun. There we go. Oh, it's a trap. I can't disarm it. Trap. Be cautious. Rose of books trap. Well, a little sad that we'll never find out what that trap was. Teachings of loss, lights love. Love is the cruelest of all the lies used by Lady Shar's foes. It's a disease, one that can ensnare hearts for a lifetime over something as slight as a passing glimpse. Love is arson, a destructive flame, offering fleeting light and comfort to the one who feeds it, while insulting Lady Shar's cold, infinite darkness. Extinguishing the fires of love, they shall burn you with their heat, choke you with their acrid smoke, and, in the end, leave you with nothing but cold ashes and a hungry heart. Damn, who hurt this guy? Must have been a bad breakup. Is there anything behind it? No. Closed library section. A scroll in the hands of this skeleton. Only those who have proven themselves worthy to the Mistress of Night are invited to look upon her secrets. Four controls adorn these walls. One permits entry. Place yourself at the center of the sanctum. Seek the northwest corner. But be wary. Enter here unwelcome and darkness will be quick to find you. All right, so look northwest. Easy. Might as well disarm all the traps anyway, just in case, you know. Better safe than sorry. Can't disarm that. They all failed perception. Crap. Trap. Be cautious. Oh. 
Fire off! Crap! A dusty tome advising Sharan initiates on how to please the Night Singer by succeeding the self-same trial. Initiates must ensure they defeat their mirror image. Any violence meted out to others will be penalized. Got soaked in acid for that. Ooh, scroll of planar binding. Target an otherworldly creature and attach its consciousness to your own. It'll follow and fight for you as an ally lasts 10 turns. I mean, that's gonna be useful at some point, I'm sure. The final sacrifice of the Moon Daughter. We are getting all the lore today. It is said that the sacred spear was once wielded by the Night Singer herself and now awaits her chosen champion. The elders have placed it in a secret place, safe until its intended wielder discovers it. Oh, okay, so I want this loot. Where is this loot? With it in hand, a final sacrifice can be made at last, and the foul moon with Saloon shall weep bitter tears and forsake her misguided followers. But let no ambitious of the night be tempted to seize the spear for themselves, unbidden, for they shall find it an inert bauble, stripped of its holy purpose. Let all of Lady Shar's children be honored to protect the sacred instrument. When the time comes, they shall know they aided the progress of Lady Shar's destined warrior, and helped usher in a return to the endless ecstasy of oblivion. I'm so tired of this death cult, is what this is. These Sharites are so bizarre. Interactive on Twitch says, Hello, mighty sir from my childhood. I haven't been here for years, but I rarely log on Twitch too. I'm so glad to see you online, man. Love you. Lol, bit too fanboy, huh? Nah, man, I love it. Give me all the fanboy stuff. I love it when, when people just fan geek over me. Now that <laughs> I'm glad to have been a part of your childhood, and I'm glad you're here in adulthood watching the broadcast today. Why all the vases got to be empty? You take the time to make it lootable and then it's empty? Teachings of loss, forgetting, and loss. Is trapped. Every bookshelf is trapped. Good grief. A dense tome written in an elegant script. Outlining the teachings of Shar. Loss teaches us the truth. In its void are we our purest expressions of ourselves. There is nothing nobler than to forget and to surrender oneself to the darkness. For that little grief that gets us there, the Dark Lady rewards us with night's eternal embrace. Yeah, death. So what? I don't want death. Wow! Again! Crap! <sighs> One! Really? 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 Stupid. What can silence the night song? Only the night singer herself, Shar, mistress of the night, lady of loss. Her names are many, but her purpose is simplicity itself. Light was a mistake, and life is an illusion, a discordant song composed of lies, breaking the peace of oblivion. 
Put your faith in Shar as your champion. Allow her to silence the false song in your heart and return you to her embrace. Nothing is all you need. The eternal womb where you are safe in the darkness with Mother Shar. Screw you, Lady of Night! This ancient tome advises Sharan initiates how to triumph in the soft step trial. They must excel in some of Lady Shar's most cherished arts, such as stealth, lockpicking, disarming, and evasion. The unsuitable, the unsubtle are destined to fail. Alright, this should be the last bit of lore. Teachings of Locke, Loss, Dark, Justicar. None can match the fervor and dedication with which the Dark Justicars serve Lady Shar. They are her most loyal, most ruthless warriors, trained in her methods and imbued with her sacred doctrine. Each initiate must take the life of a Cellunite before they can call themselves a Dark Justicar. That way it can be said that every member of their ranks has already wetted their blade with the blood of Lady Shar's foes. Okay, stand in the middle. And look northwest? Or was it east? Was it east or west? Northwest. Okay. That's west. So that's north. And that's northwest. Gustavo plays, says, Shar bothers me. Its whole religion is basically talking people, or taking people that lost everything and making them cause others to suffer with them. It's objectively evil. It, it really is. And what's their reward? Death? That's, like, they all strive to die. They want oblivion. That's, that's all there is to hope for. Seem to work. In case we get locked in. Oh, 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 what do you mean perception failed? Looks like a trap. Easy. This place is hungry for blood. Ah ha 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 ha! Gas pit. <sighs> Got to pass a twenty-one. Really? Uh, roll again. Yay! Okay, Riddle of the Night, Teachings of Lost Own Secret. Lady Shar knows what you bury deep inside your spirit. She knows what pains you and gnaws away at your very being. Be open with her about your failings. Let her place the soothing hands of oblivion upon your wounds. Let her know you utterly so she can release you from your shackles. It's not just death, it's oblivion. Like, it's the destruction of the soul as well. Oh, man. I'm going to go through all my inspiration to disarm each and every one of these. It's going to be four, isn't it?
Pavel says, uh, Ox, the gas pits only trigger if you do the riddle wrong. Do it right and no need for disarming. Okay. Well, maybe I'll hear this riddle first. All right, we got a bookshelf. We've got a bookshelf. And we've got a lever and riddles of the night. What can silence the night song? Emptiness is a holy state, one to be pursued and admired. To void oneself of all feeling, all attachment, is to approach the purity of Lady Shar's embrace. We each must struggle in our own way to turn from the temptations of light and life. Remember that all those false comforts will betray you in the end. Only the sacred nothingness will endure. Of Shar. Might not be the time. Might not be the time. Hmm. Next time's the charm. Alright, so I gotta put a book in here. What can silence the night song? The Night Singer? Yeah, here it is. What can silence the night song? Only the Night Singer herself. Shar, mistress of the night. Lady of Loss. Okay. Only Shar can silence the night song. So we got to put a book in there. What can silence the night song? Uh, so the big question is which book? So it's not l a light's love. All right, it's either Final Sacrifice of the Moon Daughter or Teaching Teachings of Lost the Night Singer. I'm guessing it would be Teachings of Lost the Night Singer. What can silence the night song? Hey, there we go. Ooh, and there's the spear. Spear of night. Quick save. Whatever comes, I'm ready. Better take that. Dark Justicar half plate, armor class 16 as compared to my adamantine splint armor, which is 18. Char's Umbrai. While obscured, the wearer has advantage on stealth checks. Advantage on constitution saving throw, ch throw checks. 
AC bonus from dexterity limited to two, medium armor. Char's aspect winds its way through the patterns and pauldrons of this half plate, and any light cast nearby seems to almost quiver away from it, afraid. For even the light knows that the clank of this armor is swiftly followed by a dark Justicar's silent blade. It's just not as good as what I have, really. Interesting that poor um, Shadowheart here is getting a lot of dark-themed equipment and light-themed equipment. Spear of Night, do I take it? Or, or is it going to hurt me? Plaque. I should probably read the plaques first, huh? Looking ahead. If not over, then through. Trust your secrets to the night. Deliver the Night Mother's mercy upon her enemies. Hmm. Shroud yourself in blackest night. That one's destroyed. Okay. Um. So do, do I need to cast darkness on myself before I pick up the spear? Dark Justicar Helmet. Oh, wow. My faith will guide me. <clears throat> she also has the Grim Skull Helm. Well, which one? Magical durability, the wielder has a plus one bonus to saving throws against spells. Great. Covert critical, while obscured, the number you need to roll a critical hit while attacking is reduced by one. This effect can stack. Mm. Constitution saving throws plus one. Adorned in a fanned coronet of spear tip points, its mask fixed with stiff lipped intent, this helmet evokes a frightful, almost alien aspect that gestures to Shar, for she is strange and terrible indeed. I like the durability. A bonus against saving throws, nice. But the covert critical thing, I mean, how, how often does she spend how much time does she spend in stealth? Not a lot. Not a lot at all. She's not a stealthy character. I mean, I could, I could play her as one, but I don't really want to. All right, I don't think I really want it. All right, let's get the spear. I should take that. This is no ordinary spear. May be important. Best keep it close. Okay, will do. Spear of Night, 4 to 11 damage. It's worse than my Blood of Lathandar, but she doesn't do very good melee damage anyway. Shar's Blessing, if Shar allows it, use this spear to kill Nightsong. Oh, hey! If Shar allows it. Hmm. Weapon enchantment plus one. Proficiency with this weapon type unlocks something javelin push okay so that's the weapon we need to kill what's his name love it I've got a long road ahead swift as my feet can carry me
Okay, well, this is the elevator up. We know where this goes. But before we do that, we gotta take care of business here. So let's do a new save. I should probably do a long rest. I don't have any of her spells. No rest for the wicked, I see. He's got some of his. Wanna dance? A long way to go. She's down. used all of hers. Maybe we'll be okay. With just his. Wonder if the gods are watching me. Pavel says, last gem is in possession of Devil Raphael wants you to kill. There are ways to get it. Violence, solve the rat situation, trick him, invisibly steal the gem. All right. Well, I need to figure out the rat situation. I tried speaking with animals and that didn't seem to do anything. <clears throat> Perhaps the rat situation will reveal itself as we delve deeper. Oh, we've got bloody scrapes going that way. And skulls everywhere. There's a transposition gem over there. Cat5 says, maybe long rest and pick your girl. You're almost at the point of no return. Well, I feel like I don't have enough information about Char. Or, or not Char, but Shadowheart. I like Shadowheart, but she's too broody and she worships a death cult. So I don't want to romance her. But if I could convince her that Char... Is an awful god, and this is not a religion she should be a part of. And if I could maybe turn her towards Saloon or something like that, then maybe she would be a much more interesting, potentially romanceable option. But I feel like I haven't gotten far enough in the story to be able to do that yet, so I'm not really wanting to make a romantic choice. Just keep playing, says Mike. All right. <laughs> Cracked helm of Char, one became many. Oh, is that the rats thing? Well, I mean, I definitely don't want to miss out on my opportunity to romance Carlac. So, if I ever do get to a point of no return with Carlac, let me know, and uh, I'll just, I'll just romance her. Cause she's sweet, you know. She's honest. She's kind. She's got good morals. Ooh, what have we here? So this is where the spell one became many. In each of us is more than what we are. Parts and multitudes that form our thoughts, desires, nature itself. Manifold are the creatures inside you, and what you can become when you speak my words is all your parts made manifest. Your weakness can become strength if it's made legion. Quaking hearts can find courage in their numbers. The lowliest vermin can humble a Goliath if they stand as an army. And a ruin can become a kingdom for one soul made many. Speak itore mustag thrice. Become your finest self, all of them. Raphael. Itore mustag. This speaks of magic that can divide someone into many. Many what? Many rat. The 
ritual circle. Seems to be infernal in nature. A cracked helm of Shar. I guess a consolation prize for those who didn't pass the trials. Plus one to cons uh, constitution saving throws. So I can't get back there. circle seems to be infernal in nature well okay it tore a mustang do we say that again to put the rats back into one person Right, well, one way to go. Oh, come on. Where's Shadowheart? Not gonna. Not <sighs> gonna, Shadowheart. No time for Daddy. Long rest, says Cat5. All right, is this a point of no return for Romance and Karlak or not? If not, I'll continue to postpone it. If it is, then I'll just go ahead and romance her.
I guess we go up. We did everything over here, right? Yeah, this is where we killed what's his name. Did we go all the way this way though? There was another way over here. I don't know if we explored it. We went that way, we went that way. We haven't gone over there yet, have we? Oh, yeah, we haven't been down there. A displacer beast. Right of the orb holder? Oh. This way? We we came from this way. We came from that way. So it's this way. Okay, so there's a nasty creature down here. Better be cautious. Well, a nasty looking creature anyway. Have to keep going. Oh, we got it. Oh, oh. Oh. It just saw me and it didn't attack. Uh it it fled. Okay, I could leap over here. It goes up. But I'm curious about this displacer beast. I saw it go down and to the right. Oh, there he is. Is he waiting for me? Oh, he is waiting for me. Probably do a hard save here, huh? Long rest, please. Okay. Doesn't look like anyone wants to talk to me. There's a chevron marker on her name though. Why? What does that mean? Something in the air down here. It's like this place wants to be forgotten. Pick your girl, Ox. All right, cat. Hmm. 
Hmm. Sad. I couldn't let myself feel sad in the hells. Letting my guard down would have been a death sentence. And letting, say, a cambion near me would have been disastrous. I thought it best to just to uh, keep my distance. But loneliness that deep gets into the marrow. Now that I'm here, among friends, I can feel it burning out of me, little by little, step by step. Uh, all right. Do I have an option to choose her right now? Listen, I'm never going back. If you said I could die right now or live a thousand years in the hells, I'd choose to go out now with my freedom intact. I don't expect anyone to understand that. But I've been dealt a hand most people don't have to contemplate playing. Okay, um... <clears throat> well, we could say, but I want you to live or I respect your decision. Let's try, but I want you to live. I want to live too, but not under any circumstances. I have the power to choose now. And I'm going to make that choice myself. But I don't want to talk about this now. I've been given a huge gift. I can touch the people I love for the first time in a decade. And for the first time in a decade, there are people I care about all around me. Let me enjoy that, please. You're so stubborn, it's infuriating. All right, Karlak, all right, I'll leave it alone for now. Thanks, soldier. I just want to celebrate this, at least for a little. Oh, hi. All right, so I don't have an option to romance her tonight. Huh, all right, well, let's go sleep. Scratch, you got something to say? Dog wags his tail, a small bag clenched between his teeth. He gives in and surrenders his fine to you. Pristine mesh toe sandals. Oh, great. <laughs> Scratch's tongue lolls out happily, his tail wagging even faster. Item received, pristine mesh toe sandals. I don't want this garbage. All right. Yeah, it's not here. Why is it not here? <clears throat> That's weird. Okay. Did I miss my opportunity to romance her? Cat5 says, looks like you broke it. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, no, that means I'm stuck with the Githyanki or the Death Cult lady. 
crap. Oh man, she was the one I wanted too. Oh, that's what I get for being indecisive, I guess. Oh man. Always shop. Never a dull moment. Okay. Right. We've got all this gore everywhere. Well, uh, I guess we should go talk to him, huh? Ooh, Dark Justicar gauntlets. We're getting the entire Dark Justicar set. Umbral attack. Your weapon attacks deal an additional one to four necrotic damage. I'm ready. She currently has uh Drow leather gloves. So that's going to be better for her. This way. No one stopped me yet. Okay, creature, Don't what do you want to talk down. about? There's something out there. <coughs> I can feel it. What's this? Fresh entertainment. But you're too fresh for this place, aren't you? There's a whiff of the surface to you. Holy shit, an Orthon. Powerful devils. I wouldn't get on their bad side without a good reason. Uh-oh. You, tiefling. You've got the stench of the hells about you. The stench of home. And a whiff of the surface besides. A servant of Zarium, if I'm not mistaken. I'd know the stench of her infernal machinery anywhere. What do you know of infernal machinery? Only what I can smell. And whatever engine burns within you is grinding to an inevitable explosion. Burning and fear. <laughs> you reek with it. There's something else, almost hidden by your fear stink. Cherries. Musk. And sulfur. Raphael! I can smell him all over you. <clears throat> we could attack. We could run. We could say, "I didn't. I don't know what you mean." I, well, what happened? Raphael, who's that? Or we could say, "Wait, you know Raphael?" That perfume trickster swindled me, trapped me. Um, we could say there's nothing stopping you from leaving. I know a way out. Or I've had dealings with that devil. Maybe we can help each other, or he wants you dead. Hmm. Let's try I've had dealings with that devil. Where is he? Spit it out. Now! Careful. I'm not sure we want Raphael as an enemy.
Raphael could be anywhere. But let me go. And I'll free you from his grasp. But if he could be anywhere, then he could be listening to us. Let's share our experiences about Raphael. Perhaps we can help each other. That's going to give us more lore. <laughs> Bargaining, are you? A Karator warlord once tried the same. I made him watch as I ate his concubines in young, then fashioned a codpiece from his skull. Oh! You can't help. Right. It's not just walls that keep me here. Not the traps, the dark, or the creatures it hides. Something stronger holds me. A contract. Either I fulfill the contract, die trying, or forfeit my freedom. If I leave this place now, I'll become Raphael's slave. I mean, this doesn't seem like a good guy. He ate a bunch of concubines? What did they do? <laughs> okay, I don't think I like this guy. <clears throat> we could pass a bard shack to say, diabolic deals in legend always have loopholes. We just need to find it. Raphael is no foolish story devil. His mind is different, sneaky. Listen. <sighs> Blood swarm to the night. Silence or prayers smother each right. Wonder shards halls hungry to slay. Leave no justice here. Alive to obey. Leave none to hear it. Then be set free. This song is your oath. Swear. Swear it to me! Leave none to hear it. Well, that explains where all the dark justicias went. This song differs from others you've studied. The final couplet contains a trick. A clause not easily fulfilled. That's it. So he's responsible for the carnage down here. All those dark justicias slaughtered. Um, <laughs> that was awful. Perhaps you should stick to killing. <laughs> or we could pass a bard check to say quite bloodthirsty as lyrics go. Have you considered some instrumental accompaniment? I don't want to make it pretty. I want to silence it. Anyway, enough prattle. The lyrics are clear. All who hear the song must die. Time to die. Okay, it's Raphael you want, not me. Or Persuasion, there must be something you missed. Let me search this place for you. Or Persuasion, the lyrics are a trick. You've always had an audience. Your followers, get rid of them. Or we can pass a bard persuasion check. Raphael's a sly lyricist. He tricked you. Your followers heard your song and still live. among themselves but they do have ears kill yourselves back to the hells with you <laughs> yeah okay that made things easier all right I still hear it seems your theory is wrong 
We can pass a persuasion check to say you're not finished yet. The displacer can hear you, can't she? Kill her. This is a 21. Oh, and put in some friends. Here we go. Yeah. Yes. 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 Kill Nessa. Stay very still. My beauty. Oh. Oh. Poor thing. <laughs> I still hear it! And then we can pass a bard persuasion check. My dear hunter, isn't it obvious you must kill yourself? Then you'll be free. <laughs> oh, what is this? Another 21. Oh, dear God. Oh, we're pushing our luck here. We're pushing it. Oh, we did it. Oh, we did it. Oh, my God. Yay, we did it. You're wrong about this. I'll claw my way out of the furnace and eat you alive. Contract be damned. I mean, we we heard it. Nicely played, Raphael. Bastard. Wouldn't he have to kill us too? Because we heard the song as well. That silver tongue of yours is dangerous. Bravo. <laughs> I can't believe you actually pulled that off. Alright! Complete! Kill Raphael's old enemy! And we get an inspiration. Well, we just mopped the floor of <laughs> all these guys. Okay, Umbral Gem. Sanctum is within reach now. Okay. Well, there's the displacer beast. Orthan's bed. That was his bed? A bed made of corpses. Disgusting and uncomfortable. I mean, I bet they're squishy. But yeah, definitely disgusting. Well, it, it pays to be a bard at times. Where's his body? Did he... Where did he drop? Up here? There's the Merrigans. Merrigan Halberd. One to ten damage. Damn, it's good to be alive. Oh, yeah, but mine's way better. Ooh, Hellfire Hand... Oh, there he is. That's his corpse. Hellfire Hand Crossbow. Very rare. Four to nine damage. Hellstalker, possibly inflict burning when hitting a creature with this weapon while hiding or invisible. Ah. Scorching ray shot. Outlander, tools of the trade. Karlak is inspired. Well, that's definitely better than what she has. 3 to 10 damage. Oh, wait, no, it's not better. For, well, it, it's arguably better. Yeah, it's better. It's better. Plus it comes with Scorching Ray.
Wow, we're getting a lot of these Merrigan halberds. I suppose we'll have to sell them. Make? Purple Worm Toxin. Coach your active weapon and toxin that deals 1 to 10 poison damage. Scroll of Wallfire. Scroll of Fly. And another Merrigan Halbred. Lots of goodies. That was a hoarding Merrigan. Is that blood? No, never mind. Twisted Marrow Throne. He can sit on it. Lovely. Pavel says, speak with the dead on the corpse bed. Oh my god, that's a great idea. Oh, that's gonna be awful. Yeah, all right. Hey. Oh man, the gold is encumbering me now. Why do I have a pitchfork? To give the infernal iron to her. I've had this boat the entire time and I didn't equip it. Okay, so this is the other path that I could have jumped down to from over there. Oh dear God, what is this corpse bed gonna say? How many questions do we have? Four? Who are you? Just servants. Just, just idiots. We 
we know what happened to them. Where are you from? What was this place for? Training, learning, worship, the running of Shaw's warriors. What did you do in life? Sir Okay, we've got five. What happened to you? The dust beats. The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. Well, that's disturbing. <laughs> that is very disturbing. A charred goblet. Boots of Brilliance. Restore Bardic Inspiration. Hey, nice. Ah, oh, but I'd have to give up my Disintegrating Nightwalkers, which gives me Misty Step. Can't be enwebbed, entangled, or ensnared, and can't slip on grease or ice. I mean, that's too good to pass up. But I could always put those on, cast the spell. Oh, Karlak is a level up. Alright, class features Brutal Critical. You've trained to strike swift and true. When you land a critical hit, you roll an extra damage die as well as the normal additional critical die. And Shadow Heart leveled up. Health increased, class features, level 5 spell unlocked. Okay. So I guess we gotta prepare spells. Oh, it's do I have everything? Insect plague? Did we have that before? Planar binding. Only works on otherworldly creatures. Flame strike, ooh. That's too good to miss. All right, so what do I want to get rid of? Um, create or destroy water. That's really situational. On save, targets still take half damage. Wow. Rena says, 
Uh, I bethink run with thy video motion picture. Yes, those are words. Composed in a sort of sentence. Thank you for that one, Rena. Alpha says, howdy, Ox. Howdy, Alpha. Good to see you today. Oh, viscera. <laughs> Ew, what is that? Spider meat? Well chewed spider carcass oozes on the ground. We can take a good long sniff. We could give it a lick. We could <laughs> try to pass an investigation check. To study it. Oh, man. It's disgusting otherwise unremarkable. All right. I mean, I got to try it. You see a dead spider, you got to take a good long sniff. Sulfur, decay, and a thin whiff of something unexpectedly fragrant. Oh, no. Yep. This is happening. Yep. I see a big dead spider, and I got to lick it. It's just, I gotta. Let's give it a lick. Karlak approves. Dale disapproves. Shadowheart disapproves. Karlak approves. The tastes of rot and sour milk. Your stomach lurches, but your loins tingle. What? Was that arousal? Why are you looking at that dead spider coquettishly? <laughs> In amongst the rot is an unmistakable sweetness. Succubus spittle. The meat is charmed. Uh, okay. Is my character horny right now? Like... What happened? Charla or Carlac liked that. Does that mean we should go get it on? Lick it again, Ox. Oh no, again? Carcass continues to leak. Oh, let's lick it again. Oh, Carlac approves. Gale and Shadowheart disapprove again. Your guts cramp, your oh. stomach Turns, oh. and your nerves burn with a pain that would almost be pleasurable were it not so savage. <laughs> Honestly, what did you think was going to happen? You develop a taste for it? <laughs> oh, not a poison! No. Oh, I, oh, crap, I'm taking damage now. Do I have an antidote? I'm gonna die! I need an antidote. Am I still poisoned? I think it wore off. It almost killed me. 
for you. No time to rest. Well, I just racked up a bunch of disapproval from my companions. Lick it again, says Cyber Rash. Again? Lick it again? <laughs> what are you guys? You guys are gonna get me killed! My face protects me. You're gonna get me killed! Can't give up now. Carcass continues to leak. Oh, all I can do is sniff it. Sulfur, decay, and a thin whiff of something unexpectedly fragrant. Well, it was just those two. Have to keep going. <clears throat> okay, well, that was a thing. We we did that apparently. Hmm. hmm. Ooh, have we been over there? Follow the blood trail. Oh. <clears throat> Is that where I went down earlier? Well, I guess all that's left is I need to put that orb. Oh no, that's where I went down earlier. Well then what's that? Down there. Okay, I think I can get down there from there. Maybe? Yeah!
Okay, so what's the point of this? Gosh. Oh, there's another one. Wait, that's the one we did. That's where we got the note about the, um, the rats. I guess so that we can check in these vases. <clears throat> oh no, we did, we did. We checked these vases on the other side. Huh. Pavel says there's a hidden part containing a room with a broken mirror and minor loot. Rumor is they plan to place succubuses there. She could help you in the devil fight to get a beast on your side, but it was all left unused in the final version of the game. <clears throat> oh, have I found that room yet? Hey, potion of flying. Elixir of Sea Invisibility. Is that trying to tell me something? Zealot of the Absolute. Ooh. Oh, wow. Amulet of the Absolute. Instructions from B, plate armor, a halberd, and a short bow. Pay close attention. Investigate strange singing. Ascertain any connection to the relic. Do not deviate. Do not fail. Return promptly. B. That was from Balthazar. And now we know what the singing was. <laughs> Hey, we got a hole in the ground. That's a deep, deep hole. Whoa. Well, yeah, this is a dead end. Well, no secret room with a succubus inside. Or what at one point would have been a succubus inside. Not that I can tell. Right, uh, how do I get the rats? I accidentally killed one in a fight. I want to see if I can find them to put them back together. I now have the spell words that I need to do it. Oh, hello. What's through this wall? Well, we do need to go over there. There's a stone door. Is this the secret room? That's how we get there. Oh, ha ha.
Oh, this is gonna be tricky. I mean, I could misty step it. I may have to. Unless one of my characters has enough athletics. Yes! Hey, a loose tile with a frosted ear, a salamander tongue, and gold. here seem to not reflect light, but devour it. Yeah, this looks like a succubus's boudoir. Plaque. Chamber of Command. No. Can't I just break it? Man. Oh, there's a key on the ground. Oh, was that for the chest? Oh, I bet you that was for the chest. Oh, well. Reflections upon the mirror of loss. The original purpose of the sacred mirror has been lost to the ages. Some suppose that it was the result of Telemout Tenthul's attempts to delve into the Shadowfell itself in the time before the folly of his master, Carsus. Others claim it only became an object of devotion after the fall of Netheril, when the lost stricken survivors of the floating cities found comfort in Lady Shar's embrace. What is certain is that many of the Night Singer's faithful claim to feel some echo of her power and majesty when in the presence of the mirror, even though it is shattered. They are often said to feel lesser once they step away from the mirror, hence the name it has become commonly known by. <clears throat> Our scholars continue to study it, but alas, its true nature may continue to elude us. 
Perhaps if the Dark Lady indulges us, she, sh she shall reveal another of these holy relics for us, so that we may feel the full power of her embrace. Do I get a special scene if I bring Shadowheart over here to look into the mirror? If not, I won't bother trying to get her over here. Nope, says chat. All right. Oh, there's the silver key. Oh, I see. Wanted to check my hair. Well, we just read that we walk away feeling a sense of loss after looking into it. But let's see what happens. The mirror is shattered and beyond any use. Oh, man. Okay, I guess that's it for the room. Come on, Barty Horn. You know you can do it. Still breathing, despite everything. Oh no. I can't do it. Oh no, I'm gonna have to miss your step. Oh, I have the magic touch. Crap. Okay, now how to get out of here. We've got to get back to that room with the gem slot. I'm trying to remember. I think it was... Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Did 
Did we already read the pedestal of reckoning? I think we did. The inscription's challenge remains the same. Brave the gauntlet of your Lady Shah, surmount her trials, and rise a dark justicia. We have all the gems. Let's put them to use and continue onwards. Let's recall the contents of the book we found about Dark Justiciers. You recall them being an inner circle of Shah followers, elite warriors loyal to their last breath. We can examine the altar. There are recesses on the altar that look intended to house something. Another such receptacle already contains a gemstone. All right, we should probably have uh, Shadowheart do this, huh? So let's give her. Oh, she's she's got she's got a lot of umbral gems already. Okay. No time to dally. What do we have here? This isn't another one of your episodes, is it? <clears throat> What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing's wrong at all. Safe failed perception. Oh, crap. What's going on? Tell me. It's fine. Really. I just feel we're on the right track. I'm right where I need to be. Under Lady Shah's gaze. Yeah, but that creepy haunted gaze in your eyes doesn't instill me with any confidence. All right, what now? The gauntlet of Shah. I can't believe it. I can't believe we found the Dark Lady's sacred crucible. What did you think of it? Overwhelming. Worship of Lady Shah is usually discreet by nature. Her holy sites have to be modest, well hidden. But that place... I never knew such grandeur had been built in her honor. This is the place where you could become a Dark Justiciar. Your dream might soon be realized. I know. I can scarcely believe it's real. But I saw it with my own eyes. Felt the polished stone walls raised in Lady Shah's honor. Normally, it would not be for me to pursue becoming a Dark Justicia without a superior's command. But this is different. My lady wanted me to find this place. I know it. <clears throat> Tell me what you know of the place. The Gauntlet of Shah is no ordinary temple. It is the highest test of the Dark Lady's faithful, to judge if they are worthy of becoming a Dark Justicia. The Gauntlet has double meaning. It speaks of the ordeals to be overcome, and of the armor-clad fist of Lady Shah that would embrace the worthy. Survive the crushing Gauntlet, and be embraced by the Night Singer at its very core. The old ways were lost over time. Now some claim the rank simply by killing a single Salunite. But before, they were a true elite. Many would attempt the trials, but few would succeed. Um... <clears throat> okay, that brings us out of that dialogue tree. Um, so it seems Kethrick Thorm did all he did for his daughter Isabel. Almost understandable. That almost is doing a great deal of heavy lifting. That man changes allegiances more frequently than a courtesan changes their bedsheets. At least he's proof you can turn from Shah and live to tell the tale. Though, some may not call that living. 
Um, you and I, I think we have something special. Yeah. Uh, okay. With haste. Right. We gotta use the beacons. Um, hmm. Let's try this one. the blood of Saluna and rise a warrior of Shah. I'll give it a try. Hey, all right, we got a bunch of level up here. There are levels up here. What to do? Choices pending. Spells. New spell slot. Let's see. Dominate a person. Make a humanoid fight alongside you. Every time the creature takes damage, it makes a wisdom saving throw against your domination. Okay, greater restoration, a new healing spell, a hold monster, paralyze the creature, mass cure wounds. The sky's up to four members of your adventuring party. Seeming, interesting, confusion, freedom of movement. All right, um, I mean, healing is always good. Try that. Okay. Choice is pending. Two more spell slots. Cloud kill. Oh, this is a spell you guys wanted, uh, were asking me if I had. Craft a large cloud that infix, inflicts poison damage per turn. You can reposition it every turn. Ooh, wow. Cone of Cold, the Flurry of Frost, Conjuring Elemental, oh yeah. Now that's cool, I like that. Telekinesis, I believe I, do I already have that? Who had that? I saw that in someone's, what's this? Wall of Stone, raise the wall of non-magical solid stone. Oh, that's cool. Perhaps that'll be useful for traversal later on. Banishment. Let's do Cloud Kill and uh, Conjure Elemental. <laughs> Cat5 says you have to do whatever romance you can now, Ox, as this is a point of no return. Really? Okay. Uh. Pavel says proceeding cut you from returning to Act One maps. Well, I did everything in Act One I wanted to. I I completed everything in, in Act One, so I think I'm good to go. Cat5 says, point of no return, Ock. 
Ox, lock in your romance. Okay, uh, all right, uh, let's go to camp. I'll try to romance Karlak again. One day I'll catch a break. Um, I'm not sure why I couldn't. Maybe I have to talk to them before night to make an arrangement to meet. Oh, hi. I think, I think I bugged it. I can't romance her now. Wow, how did I mess that up? I guess I messed it up by not choosing to hug or something immediately after her engine was fixed. Crap. Well, I guess that leaves Shadowheart because I'm not interested in a, in a Gith Yankee. what people mean when they talk about butterflies in their stomach. Did you want something? Okay, but she still likes me. Adam says, I think Carlax is locked by not kissing her after the upgrade. That sucks, man. <laughs> I chose not to because I wanted to see if I could... I wanted to advance the other characters' romance dialogues and stuff, but it looks like I missed my opportunity with her. Oh, well, at least I went through what the romance looks like so that we explored all of her dialogue, even if I reloaded a save. I guess we're going with Shadowheart. All right, uh, you and I, we share something special. Very serious of you, but go ahead. Um, how are you faring? Well, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't been dwelling on becoming a dark justice here. Perhaps seeing the power of Shah unleashed on that land is keeping the thought in my mind. But don't worry. I still have plenty of room for you in both mind and heart. I don't get it. Everything we've learned about the Shah religion is saying, push away love, push away light, push away life, embrace oblivion, embrace death, embrace darkness. And yet she's wanting to have a romance? This is... She, does she really want to be a jerk this this year? Or just this year? I don't think she really understands what that entails. I want to talk about all that's happened to us, we could say. Fine. What's on your mind? How am I holding up in your estimations? Quite splendidly, to give credit where it's due. You and I have shared some good times together. And it seems we have plenty in common. Considering all we've been through. I think I was very lucky to find such favorable company. And attractive company too, no less. Alright, I think that's as far as I can go with her. Maybe this bard will just be single and celibate. <laughs> Cause, cause, no, I could always romance uh, Harden over, or Halzen over here, right? We still have Halls and we could romance. Or did I push him away too? All right, where were we? Let's go down here. Lead on Shadowheart. Stay idle. I must keep going. Well, wait a minute. Do we really want to do this? I don't want her to become a dark justice here. This must be where initiates undertook their final preparations. You show great the end is near. Do not falter now. One more test awaits. Descend to the night soul. Make a sacrifice. Rise again. A dark justice here. Make a sacrifice. Fail you, my lady. <clears throat> so we read that in order to become a dark justice seer, um, an initiate has to murder someone or something. Gift of darkness. Shroud yourself in blackest night. Deliver the night mother's mercy upon her enemies. Trust your secrets to the night.
Okay, Shadowfell entrance. Be the last step. I need to pray. Only by Lady Shah's grace did we even make it this far. We can try to pass a wisdom check to use the power of the parasite to peer into her mind. Ah, I gotta pass the sixteen. Try again. Hey, all right. Criti critical success. You feel your mind slip into shadow hearts. But you are not the only one present. There is another. Ancient, commanding, rendered from purest darkness. Shah. Take my spear. Step forward and strike down the Selunite. As you command, Night Singer. Now go. Warm my blade with moon crazed blood. And be wary of your companion. He pries in your thoughts. Oh no! Crap! That wasn't for you to hear! My bad! Sorry, Shadow Heart, I shouldn't have done that. She has to kill a cellunite. This is ridiculous. I don't like it. Um, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. Yes, you could have. Don't pretend otherwise. Okay, um... Whatever you think you're going to do in there, forget it. You will not stand in my way. Draw your weapon. Uh, let's calm down. We'll talk about it later. Just remember what I said. Let me do what I need to. I didn't like how that turned out. I'm tempted to reload. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like how that turned out. Thankfully, I had just saved. Long rest, Doc, says Cat5. I mean, I haven't... I haven't gotten into a battle since my last long rest. You guys long rest a lot. Yeah, I've got all my spells. What am I to do? Everything is up. And I still have both of my short rests. I don't think I need to. What's next, I wonder? No time to waste. It's for the cutscenes, says Chad. Oh, oh, okay. This must be where initiates undertook their final preparations. You show great the end is near. Do not falter now. Okay, you guys want me to long rest now? Because we just long rested. I will not fail you, my lady. Is that blood? No, never mind. 
Well, my day just improved. Did you want something? Uh... Very serious of you. But go ahead. Admit it, you've never had a relationship quite like this one, have you? Even if I could remember, I'm not sure I'd tell you. I don't want your ego to get overinflated. <laughs> hey, at least she didn't disapprove. Fine. What's on your mind? Quite splendid, considering all we've been through. I think I was very lucky to... Do you know what happens when a devil is struck down on this charming plane of existence? It returns to the hells, to the very point where it last stood before venturing to whichever devil-forsaken plane it died on. In the case of our friend Yergir, the Orthon you so handily dispatched in the Temple of Shah, he manifested in my house of hope. He returned to me chastened but intact. His wounds healed, his body restored. He thought I would dismember him. But he has his uses. So instead, I am re-educating him. Oh dear. We delivered the devil. Now I want what I'm owed. We had a deal. Indeed we did. Oh dear. I discovered all there is to know about those scars of yours. It's a rather grim tale. <laughs> Even for my tastes. Um, are you sure you want to know, Asterion? Maybe it's best left in the past. Even if I wanted to walk away from all of this, I can't. Cazador won't let me. And why would he want to walk away? This is his destiny. Carved into that ivory skin of yours is one part of an infernal contract between the archdevil Mephistopheles and your former master, Kazador Zar. Oh. In full, the contract states that Kazador will be granted knowledge of an infernal ritual so vile it has never been performed. The rite of profane ascension. It promises to be a marvelous ceremony. Very elaborate, incredibly ancient, and entirely diabolical. If he completes the rite, he will become a new kind of being, the vampire ascendant. All the strengths of his vampiric form will be amplified. And alongside them, he will enjoy the luxuries of the living. The arousals and appetites of man will return to him. And unlike Astarian, he will have no need of a parasite to protect him from the sun. Wow. But the ritual has its price. As all worthwhile things do, Lord Cazador will need to sacrifice a number of souls, including all of his vampiric spawn, if he is to ascend. Imagine how he felt then, when one of those precious spawns simply disappeared into thin air. The only missing ingredient is a starion. You are the final piece he requires to complete the ritual. Your scars bind you to it. Your soul will set off a very wave of death, bringing Cazador his twisted life. And that, my tragic and toothsome friend, is that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have business elsewhere. Well, uh, that's, uh... <laughs> yeah. Cazador is a piece of crap. We're gonna stop him. Do you think it's so simple?
You'll never be free while Cazador lives. I hate how right you are. I knew he wouldn't leave me alone even when I was just another wretched toy for him to play with. But if I'm the key to this power he craves, he'll hunt me to the ends of Faerun. I need to take the fight to him. Yeah. And I need you to help me. Well, then you shouldn't have put a knife to my throat when we first met, huh? Jerk. All right. Let's see what I can do. Of course I'll help. We'll hunt him down and kill him. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm glad you guys made me long rest. Ah, uh, doesn't look like... Alright, I'm gonna try once Come more. Down. I'm gonna try once more with Karlak. Mm. <laughs> Wish I could say I was surprised about Cazador's pact. Where blood, death, and betrayal parade, you can bet your ass a devil is riding Grand Marshal. We're going to keep Astarin safe. On my life, Cazador won't touch him. And that's why she's great. She's she's the best one here. And I can't romance her because I wasted the opportunity. <clears throat> Crap. All right, what about you, Shadowheart? It seems like Cazador used Astarian's flesh not as a canvas, but as a contract. We haven't heard the last of this, I'll wager. I mean, we have the exact same dialogue here. It's not... advancing. Very serious of you. But go ahead. Uh... Well, the only one we haven't done is, I feel like you've been distracted of late. I don't want us to drift apart. I won't pretend that I don't know what you mean. Ever since we entered the Shadow Curse, I felt like something's calling to me. Some purpose that I need to find. Give me some time. If I can figure out whatever it is that I need to do, well, then there should be more time for us. Okay. Judd Knight says to talk to her again, that I need to talk to her twice. I feel like I've done that a lot, though, but I will try again. Oh, hi. Yep, nothing. Hello, my dear. Don't call me that. We're buds. Buddies, I am not your dear. I already had turned down Gale. Don't make me turn you down too, Asterion. I can't imagine how Asterion must be feeling. The terms of your own condemnation carved into your skin. A monster's actions. And monsters do not deserve such power as that ritual promised. When the time comes, Astarian will have his revenge, I'm sure. And it will be richly deserved. But not yet. So... What can I do for you? Um, the Night Song sounds useful. Could it save you from the orb's detonation? Alas, no. The charm Elminster granted me requires my death as the spark that will light the orb's fuse. Making myself invulnerable, immortal, or in any other fashion unkillable would render it useless. And gods only know what it might do to the orb itself. Still, I see no harm in learning what we can about this night song. And if we manage to find it, the harm will be all Ketherics. So, well worth indulging our curiosity. I agree, Gail. In my years as the Blade, I've witnessed countless cruelties, faced unimaginable evil, but Thorn. He is made of pure hate. The Sword Coast will rejoice when the bastard's fallen. 
My father is somewhere in this tower. I won't leave him in Thorm's hands. And lest we forget, we've a devil to rescue. Two missions, one destination. Any idea where we'll find Duke Ravenguard now that we've reached Moonrise? <laughs> Not in a mere prison cell, certainly. My guess, Thorm will have confined him in the bowels of the tower. The deeper we dig, the closer we get. Well, I definitely don't want to forget his father and leave him behind, so... When I need to put Will in my party, let me know. Oakfather, preserve you. I feel like we've gone through all of these dialogue options. So, let's sleep. Okay. Sinking cloud save. All right. Hard save. I'm ready. Whatever it takes. I should probably put the spear in her hand, huh? Spear of night. the last step. I need to pray. Okay. <clears throat> well, we won't pass the wisdom check. Only by Lady Shah's grace did we even make it this far. Ah, uh, let's leave her to her prayers. Uh, no, let's say Shadowheart? Nothing. Shadowheart continues her prayer in silence. We can leave her to her prayers. All right. No need to dash in ahead of me. I'm ready. What's going on? Nothing. Just a show of respect. Trust me. You wouldn't want to displease her. Not here. Let's continue. Okay. Journal updated. The Chosen of Shar. Your party is gathered. You are ready. Or so you hope. Are you sure you want to proceed? Depending on your choices, the state of the region could change. And some active quests may become unavailable. Yeah, I did a hard save, so... Yeah. Trepidation and awe ripple through you as you enter the water. Beyond lies Shah's domain. The shadow fell. of barbed wire and stone. Who wouldn't want to love and worship this god? Lady Shaw. I can feel her all around. This is her domain. This is the Shadowfell. Night Song Prison. Lighter, unburdened, as if the softest push could send me drifting away. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I won't jump very high. Another step forward. Oh, I see.
increased jump distance. And reduced falling damage. Justice your Avenger. Just a little bit further. See my actions, Lady Shaw. Hear my words of faith. Gail, thank you. Kill her, listen to her. Is that the Cellunite? This is trippy. Path interrupted. Invalid target. Ah, here we go. That's Night Song. Singer of Sorrows. Oh, dear. Yeah, okay, so Night Song's a person. Really don't think we should kill her. Probably not a good idea. I wanted to read the plaque. I have felt you coming. The first in a century. You who have come to seek the praise of your wicked goddess. You, who have come to drive a dagger through my heart. Not a dagger, a spear. My Lady Shah's spear. Her fate is mine to seal, let me handle this. The fate you seal is your own. To be a dark justicia is to turn your heart from everything but loss. You will know no love, no joy, only servitude, until, of course, your mistress inevitably discards you. And there is much she does not tell you. A terrible blood price that may extend beyond my own death. You feel Shadowheart bristling. This is important to her. But your bond is strong. You may yet be able to sway her from the path of duty. 
to the path of light. Okay. And night song is not blind to your conflict. Behind that raging heart is the restless beat of one who knows too well that her fate hangs in the balance. We can trust Shadow Heart and do not interfere. I think that will lead to misery. Do as you must. That won't work. Is this truly what you want? I like this one. Um. Choose your own way, Shadowheart. You cannot allow your goddess to control you. Okay, Chad is saying number one, trust Shadowheart. I don't trust her. Like this entire time she's been talking about how much she loves being a disciple of Shar and all of that. I don't know if she would make this choice on her own. Plus the narrator chimed in and said that we have an opportunity due to our bond to convince her not to do this. Save first, says the chat. All right, fine, I'm gonna quick save. <laughs> um, Save and then trust her, says the chat. All right. I think I should do this one. Number four, choose your own way. You can't allow your goddess to control her or to control you. But if we do choose number one and she doesn't interfere, then she'll have no one to blame for abandoning Lady Shar than herself. Which may make her embrace her new destiny more willingly. Okay, let's try number one, see what happens. I kind of think she's gonna choose wrong, but let's see what happens. Well, well, well. What's that I sense? A spear intended for my heart? Empowered by your goddess, I. Empowered to kill the child of a god. Do you know what I am, little assassin? For I know you, a lost child. Frightened by wolves in the dark. What did you say? Much has been promised to you, hasn't it? But what has been taken from you? What do you know of your own heart? Your own life? I sense more in you than you know. Whatever you think you know of me won't matter once I become who I'm meant to be. <clears throat> kill her. Let's finish the ritual. Pass a persuasion check. Don't do it, Shadowheart. Don't kill her. You'll regret it. Or she knows something about you. Spare her and see what she has to say. Or we can say nothing. Say nothing. Let's go down the say nothing route and see where it leads. I'm surprised. I, I can't believe I just did that. Lady Shah will disown me. What will happen to me? Not what will happen. What will you do? Your past is not yet lost. Your future is not yet fixed. Lay a hand on me in friendship, not quite Sharon. And I will fight the battle that has been waiting for me this last century. Then... Oh, then we will have much to discuss. Ow. 
I'm surprised she chose that. Our Lady of Silver, hear me. She who guides the Moon Maiden Saloon. Mother of the so-called Night Song, the Night Song is no more! Wow! gift, little warrior. Don't you find it oh so curious that you would spurn your dark lady? Perhaps you feel a staring of the truth already. But that will come later. There is a battle yet to be fought. You have done what we feared was impossible. You have released me from a century of sorrow. Your power is great. So too must be your weapon. You must choose what you will wield. And the Moon Maiden will provide. Thus I have said, thus will it be so. Are you ready? <clears throat> ready for what? To get out of this place? Absolutely. For my weapon? Naturally. <laughs> yeah, I'm there for the loot. And it shall be yours. And then, we're going to kill Ketherick Thorn. Hey, I like that. Okay, but I can't fly. We need to leave. Lady Shah won't stand for us to be here, not after what we did. We? This was all you. It really was all you. Like, I, I wanted to intervene, but I didn't. Chad wouldn't let me, and at, surprisingly, this was all you. Like, I I would not have expected that. I thought she was going to side with Lady Shar, but okay. Okay, let's get out of here. I'm not sure there's a place that's far enough away for me to go. Lady Shar must be angry. But there's only silence. Let's get out of here, please. Whatever's coming, I don't want to be in the heart of the Shadow Fell when it finds me. The Night Song will be headed for Moonrise Towers. We'd better get there and see what she's unleashed against Ketherick Thorn. Fade to black. Getting rid of all of the darkness that's been shrouding the land. Cool. Powerful ally. Well chosen, Shadowheart. Catherick has the wrath of the heavens upon him now, and no hope of resurrection. Reward! We freed Night Song. Shadowheart was inspired by that. Acolyte Ceremonia Alorum. Alarum. Uh, we freed Night Song and have been blessed by Saloon for saving her daughter. Night Song is Saloon's daughter. Is that a part of the lore that we read and that I just forgot? 
we received the Moonlight Glaive. This object shines with a glowing light in a radius of 20 feet. Weapon enchantment plus two. A gift from Dame Aelin and her radiant goddess, this weapon's contours hold a silver-white beauty akin to the mighty lantern that climbs the firmament each evening. But I'm not proficient with that particular weapon. Who would be? Well, uh... She wouldn't be. Would she? Is she proficient with this type of, this weapon type? There's no time to waste. Yeah, she is. She has rush attack, main hand attack, and braced melee, as well as moonlight butterflies. Strike a foe conjuring an illusory swarm of moon pale butterflies, granting advantage on attacks uh, the next target. Sweet. Is that better than Lathander's light, though? When your hit points are reduced to zero, you regain two to 12 hit points. Allies also heal. All right, so this is useful because if she dies, she heals everybody instead of dying. And it also sheds light in a 20 foot radius. Enemies are automatically blinded and it has the sunbeam evocation. I miss out on the moonlight butterflies. Overall, I think Lathander's Light is better. Plus, I can use it with a shield. No one stole my hand. Okay, I want to read that plaque. In her blood be anointed. Dark Justicia. There's another plaque. Ascend in her silver blood. There's another plaque. the moon. All right, let's go. Shadow fell exit. I thought perhaps I might have been dead. This... This is all like some sort of terrible dream. But it's real, isn't it? I stood before the night song. I heard Lady Shah's words. And I failed her. Worse than failed her, I defied her. Just because of what that Asimar said. I tried to leave, but Shah blocked me, punished me for failing her. I thought I knew the limit of pain that the incurable wound could inflict, but I had no idea. It felt like I was suffering the agony of a thousand people all at once. My blood was boiling, my hair was on fire. I thought I'd claw my own face off with the pain. But then she released me. 
banished me, more like. She said I was an outcast. That all of her children would know me and revile me. Shadowheart looks distraught, abandoned by her goddess and all former allies. And as for her divine magic, admitting who empowers her now may break her spirit for good. So she only becomes a dark Justicar if we egg her on. Left to her own devices, she doesn't. Because she wanted to know more about her past. Which means she mustn't have been very committed to Shar to begin with. She only did so because it was the only thing she knew. It was the only connection she had. <clears throat> you made your choice, you'll have to live with it. We're all alone in the end. Unless you count the tadpole. If it's any consolation, I think you did the right thing. I never thought you actually would defy Shar. What's going through your head? Or, you're not alone. You have me. Well, I mean... I can't have Karlak now because I messed it up, so... Yeah, consolation prize. You got me. I suppose I do, don't I? You've done more to help me than my faith has in recent times, if I'm honest. Thank you. There's been something between us for some time. A connection. More than friends. I recognized it, but didn't act on it. I thought my faith was the most important thing in my life. I couldn't have been more wrong. Here we go. I've squandered too much time already. I want to be with you. Now and always. Do you want the same? Well, I'm gonna learn from my lesson with Karlak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to postpone the inevitable, I suppose. Uh, so I'm going to say I do. I've wanted this for a long time. It wasn't too long ago that I could never imagine smiling again. Shows what I know. Night Song promised she'd tell me something about myself. I need to speak with her as soon as I can. What she said to me back in the Shadowfell about the wolves... That's no coincidence. She took flight to hunt down Kethrick Thorm. All I can do is help hasten his demise and hope that answers soon follow. How are you feeling? Do you really need to ask? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a lot on my mind. Yikes! The shadow fell. Night song. I can think of little else. Snap out of it! You made a choice, now live with it! Perhaps you should try to appease Char. She may forgive you. Night song has some splaining to do. I need you focused, Shadowheart. There's a lot at stake. Let's say I'm worried you're not yourself. That's more true than you may have intended. I'm not sure I'm the same person I was before. The Shadowheart I thought I was would never even dreamed of defying the Lady Shah. I'm a stranger to myself. The sooner I speak to Nightsong, the sooner I'll know what the future holds for me. Assuming I have a future at all. I'm here for you if you need me. I thought you might have needed reminding after everything. Thank you. I think any attempts at comforting me might be in vain just now. But you're sweet to keep me in your thoughts. Okay. Oh no, Karlak, look! Listen, Karlak, I tried! I wanted to, but in the camp you didn't talk and I... I'm sorry. I tried. I really did, but... Look at you, soldier. If I didn't know better, I'd say you're falling in love. You and Shadowheart. She's got a sweetness to her, just beneath the surface. And you're good at getting just beneath the surface. I won't lie. I wish it could be you and me. I know! But 
I get that it can't. Oh. I do. Can it be both? Why can't it be both? This is a fantasy game. Why can't I have like a fantasy where I get both? Oh, Karlak, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, here you go. Why do I have to choose between you? I care about you both. Oh, we've got this. Wait, I wanted you, Karlak, but I thought it wasn't possible to be together. <laughs> Why is this game so complicated? All these choices. Uh, well, now I'm going to break. I mean, Shadowheart just stood there and said, do you want to be with me? Like it was, it, it was just blatant. And I said, yes, I can't say no now. I can't say no now. If I do that, I'm going to... Oh, that would be awful. To betray her like that after she just said, Do you want me? This is the workaround, Ox, says Cat5. I'm <laughs> going to do a new save here. Save. Stick with Shadowheart, says uh, Elliot. Yeah... I mean, I have to think about who do I think would be most emotionally um, sturdy enough to accept rejection, I guess, to, to be able to go on. But then she's never, she hasn't touched a person in 10 years. Like, it's just awful no matter how you think it. Like, Shadowheart is wrecked. She just chose, she just threw away her past life and she's got a faulty memory and I'm the only person in her life. Karlak is wrecked because she hasn't been able to touch anyone for 10 years and I'm the only person in her life. I gotta disappoint someone. It's awful. I hate being in this position. Um, okay. I think Karlak would probably be the most sturdy. The most able to be by herself. And yet I, I really like her too. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna say you're special. Thank you for understanding. Of course. What else are friends for? Friends. Now we're friends. We're chums. Best buds. Uh. <laughs> the, chat, the chat is freaking out now. <laughs> no, says chat. Darn you, Ox, says Cat5. This is for the best, says Elliot. Now load and try the other option. Shibify says this is heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. She just, she just looked at me like, yeah, well... We are friends. She was so disappointed. I kind of want to see what the other dialogue options are. Like, what happens if we try to go to the menage a trois route? <laughs> Ugh, this is exhausting. You and Shadowheart. I won't lie. I wish it could be you and me, but I get that it can't. I do. All right, so here we let's see what happens if we say, why can't I have you both? And I'm sure we both care about you. I can't speak for Shadowheart, but for me, I want all of you. Or whoever comes next. I'm a hungry lady. I don't think I have it in me to share. Not now, anyway. But oh, hey. Man. Don't worry about me. If you prefer Little Miss, then it probably wouldn't have worked out between us anyway. Ouch! Soldier. Oh! <laughs> I actually like that response from her better. A little bit of sass in there, too. Eh, if you like Little Miss better anyway, it wouldn't have worked with us. But then she said she was hungry. How do you turn down someone who goes, Oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens if we go. Oh, wait, no. I know Shadowheart is standing right here, but I didn't really want her. I was lying. Oh, that's going to be awful. Let's see what happens. Shadowheart 
Shadowheart is literally standing right there, too. This is gonna be so awkward. You and Shadow. I won't lie. I wish it could be you and me, but I get that it can't. I do. Okay, here we go. Wait, wait, wait. I wanted you, Carlac, but I thought it wasn't possible to be together. Well, it might not be. Not with this tin can in my chest. You deserve someone... Someone... whole. Uh... You are whole, but I think we're better off as friends. Or, oh hells! I want to be with you, Carlac! I'm not sure what to say. I thought you and Shadowheart were going the distance. So did I! You changed your mind. Did I? <laughs> did I change? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we could say, I have. It's you I want, Carlac. Only you. Oh, thank the gods. Dear God. I thought I was losing you for a second there. Not sure this old hunk of junk I call a heart can take any more damage. <laughs> I'm sorry for Shadow Heart. Yeah, it yeah. It can't have been easy for her to open up to you. I know she'll be all right. Oh. She's got a lot going for her, that one. Good luck. To both of you. Will she be all right? Does she have nothing to say now? I kind of just... Good luck to both of you. What happened? I told her that I loved her and I wanted to be with her. Shadowheart? So, I gather your <laughs> affections have drifted elsewhere. <laughs> Curious. What drew you to Karlak? The muscles? The musk? I suppose we're all entitled to a bit of rough now and again. <laughs> uh, oh no. What we had... What we had was casual. Ooh. Ooh, that's rough, man. That is brutal. I gotta see what she says. <laughs> Alright, hold on. Did I do a hard save before? I did. So I'll quick save now. Quick save. Yeah, yeah, Shadowheart, what we had was casual. I suppose it was. And... Don't worry, I'm not going to toss your belongings into the campfire or anything. Though, for a while, I thought I might have someone to share new memories with. Not to be, it seems. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, that's awful. You wanted something? Uh, oh, did you hear the voice? I'm sorry. It might be best kept until later. I'd be a poor counsel and worse company just now. I hate seeing Shadow Heart suffer like this. All for doing the right thing. It's up to us to look after her now. If she needs a rest, we carry her. If she needs a hand, she has ours. If she needs ears, we've got four between us. Whatever she needs. I mean, she needs Barty Horn. <laughs> that's, that's what she needs. Right, let's see what else happens. Do I have to decide now? I don't want to make this decision now. I just want to postpone it. I don't. I, I want to deal with it later. Maybe at the very end of the game, then I decide which which character I actually want what to be with. What drew you to Karlak? The muscles? The musk? I suppose we're all entitled to a bit of rough now and again. <clears throat> I didn't mean what I said. It's you I really want. <sighs> don't be like that. You've made your bed. Now go and roll around in it with your new bow. Though for a while, I thought I might have someone to share new memories with. Not to be, it seems. After saying that, does Carlac over here and get pissed off? It's up to us to look after her now. No. If she needs a rest. Postponing is what got you into this mess in the first place, says Odd X. It is. I hate this. 
Alt Grendel says Ox are such a Romeo. I'm not really. This is a Romeo would know. A Romeo would know what he wants and just go. I don't know. I I don't. I like Karlak. I like Shadowheart. I'm having a hard time choosing between the two. Kimosabi says decide. Yeah, I know. I gotta try to do that right now. Can I, can I just not? Can I just not romance anyone? Can I just reject them both? Maybe that's what I want to do. Just want to be single. Life is easier that way. <laughs> um... Shadowheart has more content. Karlak is best girl. Yeah, Karlak is best girl. Really. And yet I feel like there's so much more to Shadowheart's story. I feel like if I don't if I don't choose Shadowheart, I'm gonna get the B story, you know? I feel like there's this A story with Shadowheart where she, you know, develops as a character and we learn more about her past and as a romantic partner, you can be more involved in that. And I feel like if I don't choose her, I'm gonna miss out on some of that and I'll get a less interesting story. And yet, Carlac is a lot of fun. All right. Let's, let's, let's go with path the path lies before me. Carlac, I guess. All right, where are we? Uh, over here. Oh, we're here. <coughs> Long rest, then go to the end, says Cat5. All right, I'll take your word for it. Was that? Hey, you. Okay, but I chose her, right? I chose her, but I can't romance her. What's going on over here? Why is he around twisting vines? Shah's ire has shaken Shadowheart, and yet she goes on. There is untold strength there, I feel. I guess it's a bug. I guess it is. So wait, did I... Are Karlak and I a couple or not? Because the last time we did this, we could tell her to, uh, to, to lie down with us, but no? You wanted something. Oh, now she's pissy. I think it's bugged. What are you thinking about? It's like having a romantic companion, but not being able to have a romantic companion. You lose everyone. <laughs> Screw this. Well, I guess that makes my decision easier. Shadow heart. I won't lie. I wish it could be you and of course. Never wanted the easy path. You chose me. I I'm not sure I know what to say. 
I truly wouldn't have faulted you if you wanted Karlak. Those arms are built to sweep someone off their feet. Are you sure you're not making a mistake? Seems your heart is a hotly contested prize. And, and we're I'm back here now. Well, me. Mm -hmm. I have my doubts about you, but let's see where it goes. <laughs> uh, what could I say? I liked damaged goods. Oh, God. Uh, your modesty is adorable. It was never going to be anyone else but you. Are you trying to make me blush? I think it might just be working. You wanted something? Okay. Uh, same dialogue options. All right, I'm really confused now. I, don't... I hate sick. It's up to us to look after her now. Uh, well, I'm not getting any dialogue here. So let's sleep. Uh. It's Brokox, says Cat5. I guess so, yeah. Somehow by save scumming, I I broke I broke the game. Oh well. All right, how much time do I have? I have a few minutes left. Uh, let's go back to Last Light Inn. No. <clears throat> The Pale Elf tra travel the road to Baldur's Gate. Assault Moonrise Tower. But I thought she went to Last Light Inn. There you are. What's happening out there? Who was that streaking across the sky? <clears throat> um... Isabel, I <clears throat> I found the empty sarcophagus of an Isabel Thorm, Ketherick's daughter. Oh no no no, that's that's not Isabel. Her name is Nightsong. An immortal Ketherick had trapped within Shadowfell. Wait, is she Isabel? Is was that Ketherick's daughter? Her breath catches. You notice a barely perceptible shudder run through her body. An unfortunate coincidence. I hope never to meet the wicked man who hemorrhaged shadows over this peaceful village. But she's Isabel. Her name is Nightsong, an immortal Ketherick had trapped within Shadowfell. An immortal? But it couldn't possibly be. Never mind. It doesn't matter. What matters is you have him in a corner. Jahira and every fighting body in this place have gone to Moonrise Towers to face Ketherick down. She's waiting for you there. End this. Now, we're all counting on you. Wait, she's Isabel. So she's Ketherick Thorm's daughter? But I thought he killed her. Moon Maiden, protect and guide you. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I don't know if I have time for a big battle.
Yeah, I'm gonna have to save this for uh, next week. Oh my god. Oh. Here we are. Yeah, this is what's going on here. Yikes. Harper Callie. Jeez. Well, we missed a lot. <clears throat> okay, we're going to have to do this next week. So we'll end it here. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Looks, looks like next week we're going to have quite a battle ahead of us uh, that we're going to have to fight through. Cat5 says one full stream and maybe a little of the next will finish Act 2. All right, well, I think I'm finally prepared for it. <clears throat> I think I'm getting into the swing of the way this game works. After 38 episodes, or however many we've been doing it. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I uh, had a great time uh, until I had to pick a, a romantic partner, and then it was just anxiety and awfulness. But I think we finally figured Which one did I end up picking? I don't remember which game save I, I'm working with now. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter at this point. I don't care. Um... Uh, next week, tune in next week, same ox time, same ox channel for more Baldur's Gate 3. I've got a lot of great content for the rest of this week, more shorts and uh, more lore videos. That's the plan. I'm going to get to work capturing that footage. So I'm going to leave you to go. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday, and I'll see you soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Bye-bye now.